Today we're setting up some box fans to see if we can make a homemade smoke tornado. Not too long ago, we took a watermelon and we turned it into a pull tab smoke grenade. It worked really well. I was actually surprised at how well it worked. And while it was going off, I had a thought that I've seen videos of people who take a bunch of box fans and put them in a circle with a fire in the middle and it makes just this fire vortex tornado thing. It looks really cool. And I was wondering if you could do the same thing with smoke. Well, our watermelon did such a good job of pouring out smoke in high volumes and multiple colors that I thought we'd try the same thing with the watermelon. But this time we've got eight of these box fans and we're gonna set them up in a circle around the watermelon as it's got the smoke coming out of it and see what happens. I wanna see if we get a smoke vortex similar to the fire vortexes that I've already seen. Here's what we've got in mind. We'll take these eight box fans, set them up in a circle angled just off center, put a watermelon absolutely full of colored smoke powder in the middle, light the smoke, turn on the fans, and see what kind of result we get. <laughs> Something's weird with that watermelon. With fire vortex videos I've seen, they actually used a few more fans and spaced them out a little bit more, but fire gets hot enough that it can actually start to melt components in the fans. This smoke may put off a little bit of heat, but nowhere near that. So I feel pretty safe keeping it right next to the watermelon. When you make a tornado with fire, the fire itself is hot enough that it really has a lot of drafting force up. The heat is pulling those flames upward quite a bit. I think we're probably gonna have a slightly different result than fire. Rather than the sort of tube shape that you get with a flame, we might get a different shape. I'm not sure. All right, here we go. Light the fuse, quickly turn on eight fans. We already got some swirling just from the fuse smoke. <laughs> it's burning in a circle. It's also not burning well. Smoke isn't catching. The way that it like is burning in a circle kind of is so weird to me. Like the smoke just comes out two or three holes at a time in which two or three it keeps circling around the watermelon. That's sort of a cyclone. 
just getting yellow now. Oh, there we go. Interesting that even with the watermelon lifted up a little bit, the smoke still gets drawn all the way down to the ground. All right, our watermelon smoke bomb is, well, apparently it's not completely burned out. As the smoke burns, it leaves some like oxidized smoke powder at the top and that can smother what's down below. So if I stirred that up, we'd probably get a little bit more burning out of it. All of our watermelon smoke powder smoke has gone up, swirled around in pretty interesting ways. I think I was right that the lack of heat raising it up caused it to swirl around in more of a whirlpool style than a tornado style, but it still looked really neat. Although there is still one more thing I wanna try, and that's just to put a little bit of fuel inside this watermelon and light that with the fans going and see if we can get a little bit of that fire vortex. Ha-ha! <laughs> Fire tornado! That works great! Random fact, winds inside of a tornado can reach up to 300 miles per hour. That's 480 kilometers per hour. A little bit of natural breeze comes in, it like ruins it. Fun stuff, smoke whirlpools and fire tornadoes. It was interesting to see the difference between how fire reacts and how smoke reacts. And like I said, I think that's because the fire has the heat that's pulling it up so fast. Whereas the smoke, while it is warm, it's not so much warmer that it's just trying to shoot into the sky the same way the flames are. Are there any other things you want to see us try with this fan setup? I have some ideas of my own, but I want to hear your thoughts. All right guys, we've got time today for a couple more question and answers. So here we go. First question is from Jeremy Molinari who asks, what are some of your biggest problems you come across when having to build all of these crazy projects? Oh, let's see. I would say that the biggest problem we run into is that when we have cool build projects, like we're making something to show you how to do it, a lot of the time, there aren't any other people who have done that project. Sometimes we do projects that have been done in other ways and we're just trying to give our own twist on them. But when we're really trying to come up with how to make something from scratch, the problem is that we don't have any instructions to follow. If there were good instructions out there already, then we wouldn't necessarily be making a video on it. So a lot of the time we're trying to show you how to do something that we didn't know how to do. And so it takes a lot of research and a lot of trial and error. And sometimes we have to do multiple prototypes. We'll try building something and it doesn't work or only a little bit of it works since we have to take the part that does work and there's build a new one. And doing that over and over takes kind of a lot of time. And unfortunately, I don't have all of the time in the world. So if things are taking too much time, I often have to give up on something for a while and come back to it later so that I have time to just go on and make other projects, other videos, other experiments and stuff like that. So time restraint is really one of the big ones in that if I can't find enough information of how to do something, I have to just figure it out by trial and error myself. While I like doing that, it sometimes can end up being this big old project for something that's relatively small. I don't want to spend three weeks trying to figure out how to do something that's really only a, it should only be a 10 or 15 minute project. Thank you, Jeremy, for your question. I hope I answered it satisfactorily. Our next question comes from a user named Tracer who asks, will there be live streaming or podcast type content? Uh, Tracers, yes and no. Yes to some of that. Uh, podcast type content, we're not probably going to have anything that really resembles a podcast, but I think we are going to try and do more of this type of thing where in some videos we take a little bit of time to talk about some other random stuff. Things coming up on the channel would be a good topic. I think we might get into that a little bit. Uh, I don't think we're probably gonna get into playing video games on the channel or streaming video games, but I'm not gonna rule it out. I personally am not very good at most video games. I've played some, I've enjoyed some, but I'm not a big gamer. Uh, sharing some maker tips and like, that's, a, that's something I actually do quite like, is the idea of sharing maker tips in these after video question answer sessions, which will, like I'm trying to explain, will be a little bit more general. It won't just be question and answer, but we're just getting into it and figuring out a good flow for it so far. But that is a great idea, and I am going to start writing down tips and ideas I have. Sometimes I have things that I would like to share that don't necessarily fit in a specific project video, but it would be a great idea to just sort of start making a list of them and share them with you as they come up, I think. 
they would be really good for me to focus on those. I think it would help me come up with more ideas and do better work and hopefully it would help some of you as well getting to share those ideas and get them out there. So thank you Tracer, uh, who also has the handle at TracerM6C. Thank you for your question. Hope I answered that for you. Thanks for tuning in. Guys, there's more for you to see. The box up at the top will transport you directly to our last video. You should check that one out. The other box will show you what YouTube thinks you need to be watching next. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, this bomb in the middle will make it so you never miss a video. Don't forget to ring the bell, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.